welcome everybody. Welcome back to another Meet the Experts interview for the Home Builder Growth Summit. You know I'm Meredith Oliver of Meredith Communications. It's hard to get away from me with these interviews here in our digital vault. And with me is a face and a name that maybe you don't quite know yet, but you're going to be hearing about a lot about soon. We're partnering together on many, many projects. They are doing great things, and I am so excited for this interview. So, John Hiscox of Open House AI. How are you? Tell us about you and your company. You're out of Toronto, right? That's correct. And, and first off, thank you for your partnership. Um, oh, and no. we're thrilled to sponsor this event. And uh, I thank everybody who's listening for uh, for dedicating their time to this moment. So thank you. And, and thanks for yeah. having me. You're welcome. You know, just to tell everybody, social media marketing really does work because mm -hmm. I don't think it was you, but maybe it was Yankee like on your team. Yep. that reached out to me, I think through LinkedIn initially, and Probably. sent me a connection request and a private message. And was like, we've got this AI technology yeah. to deliver personalized results on builder websites, which we know you build. We would want to talk to you. And I get a lot of requests to, to show me demos. And so typically that's not my role. That's my husband and business partner, Alan's role. Mm -hmm. So I flipped it to him and said, this is kind of cool looking. I actually think you should book this one. He did. And we've been off and running ever since. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, I mean, the world has changed and, you know, we're all used to things. I mean, if I think about the, the, the single biggest consumer platforms that people work with in terms of buying things. It's, it's Amazon and Netflix. Uh, and what you notice is there's personalized re recommendations that happen. Every one of time. them. Yeah. Every one of them. And, and it's not only just, you know, for example, the movie within Netflix, of course, it's which thumbnail do they show you to get your interest? And all those things are driven by your behavior. Mm -hmm. And so what we at Open House have built, and we are currently um, promoting around the, the, the market, is we've built an artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, platform that creates predictions about the buyer journey. Now, you know, we'll talk about this in detail, but in essence, what happens is, People that visit home builder websites, when they see what is being shown on the screen, on their community pages, that inventory is specialized and specific to who they are. And of course, you know, who they are is a bit of a controversial thing, but the reality is our platform is able to make predictions based on them when they arrive. And then once they start interacting with the platform, the platform is learning more about that person's individual biases and, and behaviors. And we start to change what we show. And the problem is most buyers are simply having to go through that sorting process themselves manually. Um, and the reality is it should be different. So that's what we do. We present yeah. them something that is personal um, and gets them through the process quicker with fewer clicks. And of course, um, it, it results in much improved conversion rates from website visits. Now, that's from the home buyer's perspective. Of course, the home builder wants to know who is interested in what product and for what reason. And so mm -hmm. while this is all going on in the background, the builder has a dashboard that is showing them real-time information about you know, who their, their customers are. Yeah. Yeah. And when you were describing what you're doing, the thing, the word that came to my mind was speed, yep. because if I am the shopper on the website and let's face it, I do a lot of online shopping. Just look yep. at my bookcases behind me. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're shortcutting my, me having to do all that figuring out and reasoning for myself, yes. which I'm sure someone could still do if they wanted to, but yeah. you're taking off seconds 
that I don't have. I'm a mom. Well, I'm a business owner. I don't have time to figure all this out. If you could show me the right size home in the right location at the right price point and sort through a hundred inventory homes to show me three that fit the criteria yep. that I'm inclined towards, bam, that's yeah, and, a win, win, win. And, and there's so many, so not only does it increase their speed through it, it reduces their frustration with a yes. typically poor experience that's in conflict with what they're used to. Yes. And the second thing is, um, you know, the trick is there's lots of options to buy homes. And yes. the trick is to get them out of the buyer pool fast and create that emotional connection with a home that, uh, that they love and, and, and yeah. get, it, get them out of the market. So we've got this graphic that we're sharing that kind of explains your process step by step. Kind of walk us through this so that everybody understands exactly what we're saying. Because, I mean, I think intuitively most of us, come on now, be yep. honest, you listeners out there, you know you've been on Amazon and you've been you've been looking at one particular leaf blower and sure. Amazon recommended three others for you to consider. I think you know what this is in other categories, yep. but maybe you hadn't thought about it in the new construction category. So walk us through this. Well, I mean, I, you know, in my, in my uh, uh, preamble there, um, Meredith, I, I, I in, in concept went through it, but okay. I mean, essentially I'm just showing you the steps of the process and the adaptation and the middle Got of it, it where it says the AI, there's two actually really important things. One is the AI adapts as it, you behave. And by behavior, I'm meaning clicks, what you look on. Yeah. How you because the right. reality is somebody who rejects their location when they go to a website, that tells a lot about you. Right. Somebody that goes to the mortgage calculator on the third click tells a lot about them. Right. Uh, and, and so all of these things, I've never here. thought about it, but yeah, it's adapting every second that's going on. Yes. The real time yes. analytics we spoke about because what, what's happening is builders historically have built homes, but with the world changing, the reason why and the, and the type of person that's buying these homes sometimes is different. You know, we're right. seeing we're seeing homes of a certain size where they thought it was meant for empty nesters, but exec or, or or people with three kids are buying them. Yeah, they wouldn't have known, and that can benefit them from a land planning standpoint, from a marketing standpoint. Forget about the fact that we know where these customers are and can make predictions about where they are based on the algorithm, even if they don't tell yes. us where they are, and that yeah. helps that helps market. Uh, the product. So anyways, I'd be happy to share it with people uh, later, but that, yeah. that that's what we do. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, again, as you're listening to this, just know we're actively implementing this together. We yep. share several clients together yeah. and uh, we're getting some initial results going and yeah. it's very exciting, yeah. uh, but it's, it's reasonable to consider that this is where our websites need to be because yeah. it's what our customers are experiencing in other categories. And we're kind of behind. We, yeah. I, I don't know why, but in this industry, we have a little bit of a tendency to be behind. We were, you know, the car industry had the online sales counselor first. Yep. We kind of had to follow them in and that's okay. That's all right. We're, we've caught up on that, but you know, this is exciting stuff. Um, it, you so, know, it, I was going to say, I mean, you know, what you just said is a, is a wonderful segue into the question you'd asked me, which was, yeah. you know, like, what's the biggest mistake some builders make? You know, we talked yes. offline and, and, and yes. I, mean, I think that's fundamentally it is um, the, the builder industry has done a wonderful job in the investment of the website. Okay. So when people go there, they've got virtual tours. You know, they've got fl virtual floor plans, elevations. You can do the, uh, you know, some technologies that give you walkthroughs. And, you know, when I think about it, the emphasis is on the home and the, the, the prettiness of the home. And I think, I think it's backwards because there's little emphasis on the journey to get to the home. And so... What I'm saying is the biggest mistake that marketers sometimes make is 
emphasis on visualization of the product, which is the home, instead of considering the journey from start to finish. Because really, home builders, most of them only know something about the, their buyer when they actually convert. Yeah. But, but if you want to get an appreciation for their experience in purchasing the single biggest financial decision of their lives, like you've got to have information on the whole journey. And, and I, so to me, I, I, I just sort of say, we've got that. It's great. Visualization. Yeah. You know, your company does a fantastic job in helping with websites. But Thank you. I, you know, I kind of challenge and I think we should take the conversation a bit earlier and maybe yes. consider their experience. A hundred percent. So yeah. the philosophy, uh, the books that are behind me that I've written has all is what I call fan tastic mm -hmm. marketing. Mm -hmm. And I call it that because the fan comes yeah. first in the word fantastic. It, yeah. Your marketing is not about you. It is about your fans. Mm -hmm. They would not be on a home builder website 11 times on average before they ever do a first live chat or make a yep. phone call or visit a model if they weren't already kind of a fan. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I make the argument they're not a lead. They're not an up. They're not a mm -hmm. prospect. They're already kind of digging you or they would have eliminated you by now. They're a fan and it needs to be about them. Yeah. And one of the ways, as you're listening to this audience, one of the ways you make it about them is you deliver them search results that are personalized to them. That mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yes. The, the opposite is what we see. And we get, I'll be honest with you, John, we get a lot of requests. This is what typically we get. And I know listeners, you are going to cringe when I say this and don't like drive off the road if you're listening, because most of you call my husband, Alan, who manages all of your websites uh, on a daily basis. And you tell him this, we want the floor plans in this order. Yeah. We want the inventory homes in this order. Yeah. We don't want to go low price to high price, which kind of makes the most logical sense or A to Z, which kind of makes logical sense. No, we want to show them in a certain order because we want to sell a certain one over another one over another one. And again, <coughs> no. bless that, you. Yeah. Bless, but th that makes it about who? You, yeah. the builder, it's not about them. What if they can't afford that one? Why are you even bothering to show it to them? Well, What's the point? What's the point? Okay, are, off soapbox now. <laughs> people are, excuse me, I had a bit of a cough there. Yeah, no. <laughs> so the statistics are that people are buying homes, um, which are, <clears throat> excuse me, more expensive than what they anticipated. Yeah, and it's true. It's true. And they always they, filter from lowest to highest price. Yeah. Nobody wants to go into the, the journey and say, I'm going to spend the most money I can. They want yeah. to spend less, but they end yeah. up when they, when you get them on the right journey, they'll spend more. Yeah, it's true. It's my thing. And, and so, but, but why preordain what they're going to see yes. based off what you want to push at them? Yep. That's called advertising. That's like 1955 Mad Men. Great yes. show, terrible approach yes. in 2020, right? Yep. Yep. In 2020, we don't do advertising. We do marketing, yep. which is a one-to-one -one relationship based off what you're interested in. Yeah. So I'd 100% agree. That's our biggest challenge is we maybe move a little too slow yep. on adapting new technology, but... But what I've noticed too, excuse me, is yeah, please. Or, I don't want to interrupt. What I, I just no. did, but my apologies. Yeah, you're but, good. Um, your industry is sort of fast followers, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Slow to adopt, but you know, uh, people move in the direction that people move, and so you know, I think I think we're going to catch up very quickly. Um, but it's just a function of the reality is. This technology that I'm speaking of doesn't exist in this industry. It does in some respects for chatbots, but again, chatbots require effort. Yeah. You've got to physically chat. 
Yeah. Which, I mean, that, that to me causes effort. So, you know, but this is technology, which you, you, all you have to do is do your regular life and it is adapting to you. Yeah. On and that's one of the things we've liked most in working with you is you're layering into a system that we've already developed that we know works for our type of home builder yep. client. Yep. And you're working into that and we're not trying to reinvent how builder websites are done in certain aspects of how they're managed and how they display. And there's certain things of how those things are done that work very well, yep. right? Uh, but you're layering into that. You're making it easy for us. You're making it easy yep. on the client, which is like the whole point, right? So yep. it's coming together really well. Um, so if we flip the conversation and yeah. we say, okay, we just said, what's the biggest challenge the builders face? But then if we say, okay, what is the biggest challenge buyers face yeah. right now? What would you say to that? Well, I mean, I think you know where I'm going to go, but it's the opposite. So imagine this. Um, you're, a, you're a home builder. You've got 100 communities on your website maybe 300, they exist, or you might just have 15. Yeah. I mean, the reality is within those communities, you've got different floor plans, you've got lots of different options. And um, it's that disengagement moment where we place them in that position. The onus on, of finding your forever home it's is on them. And, and so they've got to go in and, and, and imagine this, why should I need to create an account if I need to favorite something? <laughs> well, because, because the technology kind of in there, but there is a company that does do that. Um, yeah. Us. Yeah. But, yeah. but I mean, the reality is the minute you want to favorite something to improve your mechanical search process is, you know, you've got to put in your email and, I tell you what, I leave websites the minute that it asks me for that. When I'm not sure. at a place emotionally or, 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 or personally with that site. And yeah. so, you know, that's an important thing. And um, when you've got to go, like, the other point is people are not always fixed on where they want to live when, you know, they're buying a home. They could live in Tucson. They could live in Phoenix, mm -hmm. Alice, or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, they're open. Totally. Um, totally. And, and, and so, so it's, the, it's the sorting thing that's a real problem. It is. And we forget being professionals in this industry. We forget how stressful this is. Yeah. We forget how overwhelming it is. Mm -hmm. I built a new construction home in 2019 wow. and got a very personal reminder yeah. of just how hard after I've been in an industry almost 20 years, I nearly had a panic attack about three different occasions yeah. trying to get this house built. It was a lot, yeah. even for me. And I knew what was happening. I could have sold myself the home. I could have managed the construction of it. Yeah. And I still felt completely overwhelmed by the whole thing. Uh, so, and then I think the other thing that you're saying that makes so much sense is I, you know, we were talking offline before we started, I've been having some medical challenges, nothing serious, but a lot, you know, a lot yeah. going on. And so I've been using a lot of different apps on my phone to research prescriptions and pharmacies and all these different things. And you're right. Every one of those apps, I need a different login. I need all of this and I'm trying to get in and I'm trying to get this one to talk to that one. Yep. And now, of course, in this world, I've got a mask on. So my face ID won't open them all. Yep. If I'm outside, which in the world, which we should wear our masks, I'm not saying yep. we shouldn't, but I need my face ID because I don't know my password yeah. to anything. Yeah. It, it's so, just I mean, hard. It's hard. And of course, privacy is a big thing. But one thing I should note is the people that use what we do also don't know they're using us. And what I mean by that is the website experience is pure. It's I the love that. website. And then the other thing is, while the, we're not a website company, right. we don't build websites, but right. we're, we're a data company that tells 
the platform, what is going on in the buyer's mind. And, and so we don't sell our data. There's an expression that says, if it's free, you're the customer or you, yeah. you're the, pro- or if it's free, you're the product. And, and yeah. we're not like that, but I mean, Good. that's the biggest thing is optimizing yeah. that experience and, and forget about the technology. The reason why is fantastic. I mean, yeah. satisfied customers that have had a beautiful experience will buy many homes from the same builder um, and they'll recommend to their friends. But and if it's refer never, many people right. and, and refer many people. And yeah. it's so, easy to do. so do you get, do you get pushback or objections of, from potential build p- yep. potential clients who are worried, like they've seen the popular movie on Netflix about AI and they're all like freaked out. Do you get, yep. Do you have those conversations or is it not a big concern? Well, I mean, we're not doing it. So our founder, um, Will, is, you know, spends a lot of time working with the ethical, working on the the concept of ethical use of AI. And um, he's extremely passionate about the fact that we're here, not so that we can sell a certain piece of inventory that has been hanging around. We're here to simply make the, uh, the, the journey better. And I think that's the difference is, it is. That, the social dilemma, we get asked that question, but there, that's all about monetization of you. We're not trying to do that. All we're trying to do is get them an appointment in the showroom and then the builder can do what they want. But when they show up in the showroom, we tell the builder or we integrate with their CRM and say, by the way, Meredith, um, you know, likes high heeled shoes and the color pink. And so you may want to consider pink wall, like all that stuff. Yeah. And, and, and you should, yeah. uh, I've said for years that digital marketing is the best R and D research and development yep. for future planning of floor plans, yep. locations, etc. And we didn't even have as rich a data as you can now provide. If yep. we, somebody uses your service, we just, yep working off Google analytics, getting basic, basic data. Uh, but it was better than nothing, right? So it really is good, excellent research yeah. and development and can provide those insights. So yeah. that's a good question for you audience. If you're listening to this, and you're like, I don't really know what I do with this. So where are you getting your insights? I mean, data is data. That data is only as good as the insights it brings you and then executing on those. Yes. So where are you getting them from? How reliable is it? What is the ethical uh, backing of that data? Is it that the data is coming from the p- place of the fan and, and it's for them, about them? I say, you know, make the marketing for them, by yeah. them, generated by them, yep. about them. Or are you trying to manipulate them into to a home they can't afford? These are tough these questions. Are the, these are the questions you need to ask yourself. Well, um, so so let me so let me step back. And and one of the things that we do, and some people are like, this sounds like fancy technology, and that's only for the big builders of the world. The reality yeah. is, we're democratizing access to important data that sometimes the medium-sized builders just can't afford to get because it's expensive. So. There's many different types of data that we use. So, so number one, we have a very large data set that we buy, okay? It's typically census-like stuff and from various sources, but it's generally, in some respects, historical, okay? It's okay. data that's happened in the past. People have got a report on it. It could be weeks old. It could be years. So, but it's good for foundational information. The second piece is the data that we create, but remember... This isn't data that's purchased. This is data that the home builder is creating, creating. through the use of our platform. And yes. so if you think about the Google uh, announcement about privacy and home builders not being able to target based on certain things, yes. uh, you know, that really, that's big. And I think it's fantastic because it's protecting us. <laughs> it's giving you a lot of opportunity. <laughs> yeah. And, and frankly, I think it's a big issue. So, and then iOS has got something coming out with uh, limited ad tracking, which again, allows people to opt out of being marketed to. So yes. those companies which monetize information 
are going to be having a bit of an issue. So the agencies, unfortunately, Meredith, like they got to think about new ways to get the marketing to the customers because they got to do it in different ways. Now, it's different when the data is created by the home builder. Yes. And, and in our case, what we are do, only doing is creating data for the home builder based on their customers and prospects visiting their site. And, 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 and that data is created through um, historical references. So before, you know, Meredith goes into a website, we've had Jennifer go through a year before. And surprisingly, yeah, yeah. the two of you show very similar attributes and behavioral patterns in the site. And that then creates data about you. And so it's all behavioral interaction with the website that's compared to previous. And the algorithm is learning every millisecond about the person that's there. So yeah. that's, that's how, that's the issue. That's the reality of us. Um, and, you know, we're GDPR compliant and all that fun stuff. We cover all the bases and I'd be happy to, you know, dig deeper, yeah. but, but it is truly complicated. Um, Will, is a, <laughs> Will is a very smart man. Yeah. Well, I have long advocated with, with builders, yep. the idea, the premise that your website is, should be your central hub because it is an asset that you can own. You, you know, a lot of them in the early days of Facebook and Facebook business pages were like, were like, well, if I can have a Facebook business page, what do I need a website for? I was like, because you don't own Facebook. Yep. And if Facebook goes away tomorrow, which it, it hasn't and it won't, I'm not saying that, yeah. but to your point, you want to gather your own data on your business asset. Yes. Yes. your website. And that's why I've long advocated for builders to have their own blog and to mm -hmm. build their own email lists. Social media is great and fine, but as it goes ebbs and flows, it goes in favor, it goes out of favor. Uh, I mean, our, our clients' Facebook ads are still performing exceedingly well and they're yep. still exceedingly cheap, honestly. Yep. They're yep. doing great, but there will come a day it will ebb and flow Yep. There, there are changes costly, just like Google's making changes to privacy. Facebook's already done all yep. of that. So those things ebb and flow, but you still maintain your website. Yes. And as long as you pay your website company bills, it's yours. <laughs> and, and, you know, you, and so you have control over something online, whereas yep. these other things, you don't own them. They could go away like that. Yep. That's right. And it's, a, I mean, listen, you're in the website business, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, but the reality is I think there are important parts of the website and the experience that um, are being done well today. The problem is the way websites are architected for most builders, um, you're really prevented from creating that dynamic experience because mm -hmm. some of them are created like trees and you can only go one direction. And, and so yeah. and, and building what we've built is not feasible at the individual level, okay. but it's feasible to, to, to buy it as a, a software as a service type thing, you know, at scale. And, and yeah. so what, I, what I advocate for is, you know what, like let uh, your agency or whatever do the things that they're really good at and continue to run things and run SEO and whatever yeah. um, and, and create great content, put it wherever it needs to go. But, you know, when it comes to the home inventory side, um, yeah. there, there's opportunities to do things different. That's right. That's but right. The notion of the website is is also one of the things that home builders are really attached to. I know. For, and, and that's where I was saying, yeah. don't drive off the road when yeah. I'm telling you, stop telling us how yeah. to order your, what order to put your communities in because you want them shown in a certain order. Yeah. Cause I'm telling you, you guys listening, you are very attached to yeah. directing how people experience the content on your site and you need to let that go. <laughs> and, and a great question I always ask is like, truly, who is the person <laughs> that should be saying what I wanna see first? The fan, the user. <laughs> That's right. 
Right. So I know we're being a little flippant and I apologize. I'm not trying to be rude, but I just, this is a constant conversation I have a lot. Um, Another thing that I wanted to mention to you that you made me think about was it is interesting. We were kind of knocking Facebook a little bit, but the truth is Mm. their AI is who taught me to respect AI. And it was one of the reasons when I got the inbound message about your company that Mm -hmm. I agreed for, said to Alan, take the demo. Because once they took away the zip code targeting, age targeting, they took away a bunch of our targeting, you really had to change over all your ad settings and just let their AI do its thing. And then there's a compare feature where you can compare our digital marketing prowess targeting, which I thought was pretty darn good compared to their AI settings. Oh man, they killed me. They killed me. Less cost per click, better, longer time, better conversion rate. Like I honestly, even though they've taken away some of those things and it seems like it would be a negative, the ads are outperforming Mm -hmm. when I had those options. Because the well, AI I, is pretty good. And let's take it a different, a, even deeper. Uh, you asked a question earlier and I didn't get an answer to it uh, to you yeah. yet. But one of, yeah. our, one of our large customers um, did a study on their own traffic and, and showed a 98% accuracy on the prediction, which is pretty cool. So that's, that's one awesome. thing. Um, we're able to, even if they don't tell us anything about themselves, we're able to go down to the zip code and let you know how many sessions are happening in it, in whatever zip code it might be. And again, 80% of people that go to websites click do not allow location tracking. Yeah. And with high accuracy, we're telling you where those people are in that moment. That's amazing. And then as a marketer, what do you do with that? Well, why spread? Everything. Why, why, why do door hangers in a zip code over there. If the people that like that home are right here, right here, right here. All right. So as we start to pull all this together and I've got a final question for you that I've been asking everybody, which is what do you see as the biggest challenge moving forward? You know, we're recording this mid October. People are going to be listening in November, you know, in the United States, we've got this little thing called an election coming up. Like I've, I've heard about it. I can't imagine that you have. Uh, (laughs) Oh boy. Um, What do you see as a challenge for the rest of this year in 2021 for the industry? Well, I mean, it's, listen, I, so I think, I think there's a, there's a lot to unpack there in a bunch of different areas. Number one, I talk to a lot of home builders. They're like, Hey, I'm selling a ton of homes. Yeah. Well, and you know, one thing I think about is if there's an inventory problem and they're selling a lot of homes, then maybe they're selling them too cheap. <laughs> right. Right. You know, yeah. and it's, it's typical supply and demand thing. So you could use technology that is testing the price sensitivity of an individual as they go. Okay. So that's something to think about in terms of like, I don't have any issues selling homes. I'm like, okay, that's fine. But it's all about uh, this stuff is, is happens over the decades, but this is the time when you make investments in your business and step mm-hmm. and think, um, especially when things are good, because you know what, they're not always good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's something to consider. The other thing is, um, you know, I, I lead the sales efforts and the customer experience for our organization. Um, it, it's, it's, people don't know who we are. You know, there's a bunch of companies with, you know, open in the front. It's like open <laughs> house. You know, I've got some good friends over at Outhouse. It's like, you know, I was yeah. kind of talk about that. But yeah, um, one of our other preferred uh, presenting yep. sponsors is Open Door. Yep, of so course. We've got, a, we've got a few opens, but openhouse.ai, I mean, you guys are unique. You, yeah. they're so going to know. They're going to we, know. We're in the process yeah. of educating yeah. Let people know what the art of the possible is. Yes. Uh, opening Ooh. eyes. And I do it sometimes in a bit of a direct way. And I apologize. It's my personality. But like, I just want people to think, to stop, think differently about their business 
And yes. think about the opportunity to create, you know, fantastic experiences. Yes. And, um, you know, and, and many of the organizations are, are just, you know, they just, they don't think about it. And no. um, they just need to. And uh, at the end of the day, the results speak for themselves. Well, so, I, the, one of the main reasons that we jumped in with you guys to work together on some projects. And then when you so graciously offered to support our event, we were like, yeah. yes, is because our whole philosophy here is that you can actually create fans from your marketing. You can mm -hmm. have fans before they even buy anything. You yes. can have fans because your marketing is so good. If you all listening, just think about mm -hmm. the products and services that you haven't even bought yet, but you're mm -hmm. such a fan of it and you're totally right. going to buy it. You're just stalking it for a little longer. You're waiting for the right time okay. or you've referred it to a bunch of other people. I can think of many products that I've bought for a bunch of other people that I haven't gotten to buy for myself yet, yep. but I'm going to when the yes. time happens because I'm such a fan just from their marketing. Yeah. And the reason I'm a fan from their marketing is they made it about me, not yeah. about them. That's right. And, and, and that's what your product does. Yep. And it's just, I just like it's flipping the table. There's yeah. so many, there's so many tools out there for the home builder to optimize the contracting experience, integrate stuff with CRM, blah, 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 as well as all the visualization stuff. But you know, I, I just take the lens, shoot it outward and yeah. take all the great work that's been done in terms of visualization and just put, show it to the right people. Yeah. Show it to yeah. the people that are Find actually going to buy that. Yep. Find the match so. and help yeah. them see that they are the right match. Yes. So, all right. Well, audience, that's my, you heard that's it. my sermon, Meredith. That's, I don't have any more to say. I got, I'm just going to say, amen, John. I'm just going to say, amen wow. and amen. All right. Well, audience, you heard it here. Uh, the favorite thing, well, you said many things that I favorite, but what I wrote down, one of the things I wrote down was fast followers. He called you fast followers. And I love that term mm -hmm. because it does can take us a while, but one of the things we have done best in the COVID economy in this industry is we ramped fast towards virtual selling, towards a lot of things that we maybe had a little ground to make up, but we hit it running. And a lot of you have blown out your sales goals this year. And we are so proud to have partnered alongside you in your success. So openhouse.ai, John Hiscox out of Toronto, Canada. We Thumbs appreciate up. you. Thank you so much for an awesome interview. We will thank, thank talk you. to you soon. You, you will, bye-bye. <laughs>